Welcome, Bobby. So go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Bobby Moresco. I am an actor, writer, director, and producer. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to work in theater for almost half a century. How do you know Brian? I know Brian. I, I've run a, a theater company called The Actors Gym for the 37 or 38 years. Um, we've never had a permanent home, kind of wherever I go, it goes. Uh, and then on my latest move from New York to Los Angeles, I needed a spot to run the Actors Gym, and I came over here and met Brian. He was gracious, clearly a lover of theater, um, and we made a deal for me to you know, see how the Actors Gym works out here at the White Fire, and uh, it's been really great, tremendous. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy I found Brian, I'm happy I found the White Fire. Tell us a little bit more about your involvement with the White Fire and projects. Well, you, you know, theater, you know, theater is a tough way to make a living. And so if you want money, you usually do something else, um, which means that you can't really support yourself. So you need a friend. You need somebody who loves what you love so that you find a way to do the things you want to do. I found... Uh, that working with Brian, he's a kindred spirit. Uh, I don't think I've ever said to Brian, you want to try this? Uh, you know, we're not going to make any money, but we're going to be really proud of it. He's never said no, ever. Uh, and in, in the half a century or so that I've been working on this, there's only been a couple of guys that, that love the theater, love what we do, and accept a challenge the way Brian does without ever complaining, without ever saying, Jesus, you know, I'm, I didn't know I was in for this because I bite off big chunks. You know, and, uh, and Brian ran right with me on everything I've ever done um, here at the White Fire, and I couldn't be happier, and I hope it lasts a lot longer. Um, can you um, go a little bit into uh, your passion for live theater? My passion for live theater, well, first of all, begins at the beginning. That's, you, know, it's, you know, back when I was first studying acting in the 1960s, it was only theater where an actor learned his craft. Um, there's a case to be made that still should be where actors learn their craft as opposed to movies and television. Uh, and so it began at the beginning with Wynne Hanman uh, at the American Place Theater in New York City and then picked up here in Los Angeles with Peggy Fury, who was uh, truly, truly one of the world's great acting teachers. Um, and so with Peggy and with Wynne, I studied the great playwrights. Um, and they, they gave me that love. And then in the mid-70s, today if somebody wants to make a piece of something they have passion for. They go out, they you know, they get a cell phone camera, they 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 rent something that may be a little bit bigger than a cell phone, and they shoot a movie for a thousand dollars. Back in the seventies and eighties, what you did was you know you put together two thousand dollars, usually borrowed from one of your friends because I was a starving artist and I had a, a wife and two children. So I, I would go to somebody and say, you know, get me two thousand, get me twenty five hundred. I've got a show I want to put up. And you were able to put it up. And you know, theaters back then and theater owners understood the way Brian does today, the way few people do today, except Brian and maybe one or two others, that it, you know, theater deserves your love, it deserves your respect, and the money aspect you know, is secondary, it's truly secondary. So from 1978 until about 19, I guess 93, I guess I, done, I did 30 or 40 live pieces of theater. Sometimes it was a full-length play that I had written, sometimes a full-length play that somebody else had written and I directed, and probably, you know, over a hundred one-act plays that we would put up. Uh, and that's what we did. You didn't make small movies then. There were no cell phones, and it cost, you know, too much money. So we put up plays. And casting directors and writers and producers uh, came to see those plays. So we knew that not only we were doing something we loved, we knew that we would be seen by the industry which uh, again, I'm not sure that that's the case today, but then that's how you were seen by the industry. And indeed, my first professional job as a screenwriter was 1987, a Warner Brothers producer came to see a play that I had written and my good friend Richard Compton directed, uh, running in New York City, saw the play and hired me to write my first screenplay for Warner Brothers. So to wind up things, uh, what do you think of Brian as a person and what he does for the artistic community while at the White Fire? I think it's in, invaluable. I think that, as I just said a moment ago, I think that Brian and people like Brian, if they're out there, because I, I don't know any others in Los Angeles, so I haven't met a lot of theater owners, but the few that I've done anything, uh, any business with and, or tried to put a play up, they just don't have the passion. They don't have the love. They do it as a business. 
Um, you know, my friend Milton Gosellos, who ran the uh, Beverly Hills Playhouse, and Gary Grossman, uh, those guys also had the passion and the love, but we never did a production together, so I don't know uh, if they have the same kind of commitment that Brian has to the artistic process. I don't know how Brian does it. I don't know how he does it, uh, but he does it, and I try to help with it. And uh, So I think he's absolutely invaluable to the L.A. theater experience. People like me and everybody in the Actors' Gym would have no place to live, learn, and grow without Brian. Thank you, Bobby. And I meant every word of it.